Expectations were not high for this week's nuclear talks with Iran, but then the chief Iranian negotiator said the meeting had been a turning point, and Secretary of State Kerry called the talks useful. By the standards of these meetings, this is giddy optimism. So what happened, and what can we expect in the next round of talks? Joining me now in a rare and exclusive interview is Iran's ambassador to the United Nations, Mohammad Khazai. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Zakari. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you. So tell me what specifically Iran uh, sees as a turning point in these negotiations. Is it the issue of the photo a nuclear facility that, that, that it does not have to be shut down but merely suspended? Is it the issue of the 20 percent enrichment of uranium? What is the turning point? Thank you. That's a good point. Uh, eventually, in my view, none of them uh, makes the negotiation a turning point in the process of negotiation. In my view, uh, as far as I'm informed, both sides are getting closer to each other. And the proposals that were put on table by on the table by the five plus one, which much, were much closer to the realities on the ground, to a kind of a sense of having a better cooperation with Iranian and Iranian with the five plus one. So the whole idea uh, was uh, much realistic and uh, than before. Uh, so therefore. Uh, I think that both sides found some, uh, uh, found some, uh, some uh, grounds for cooperation in future. And let me just spell it out. So the, the things that, that, that encouraged you were that there was some talk about relaxation of sanctions. There was some understanding that you did want some 20 percent enriched uranium to be used in the Tehran uh, medical re uh, research reactor for medical purposes. So these you regard as steps forward. Definitely, definitely. You know, uh, uh, we have to have a realistic approach in the negotiation. Of course, the details should be discussed from the technical point of view in the course of next couple of weeks and next few months, which they will discuss both sides. But the feeling that Iranians have from the Almaty negotiation is that both sides are getting closer to each other. That's the, the main point. It doesn't really matter about the details okay. to discuss right now. The details could be discussed later on. But when they decide, to uh, negotiate <coughs> with each other uh, with a more comprehensive uh, simultaneous step should be taken. These are the important points. So, for example, how much stockpile Iran can, can have or how much uh, at, or the re enrichment at what level should be in Iran. Those are the, in my view, a small and technical points that should be discussed. Besides that, my understanding is that Iranian will be able to to enrich uranium at least at the 5 percent level if what they need for TRR and for our more than 1 million patients is provided by the other side. So these are the good and positive signs that we can take. But of course, uh, we still have a far way to go ahead to, to fulfill uh, uh, Iranians' expectation from the other side for a confidence building measures. Uh, but uh, I think for the last few years, it was a turning point in the negotiation between Iran and 5 plus 1. One of the things that, that disappointed many people here was uh, a turn of events that took place about two weeks ago. And you were in Tehran at the time, and you have access to all the top leaders. So let me ask you this. Vice President Biden raised the prospect of direct talks between the United States and Iran. Ayatollah Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran, uh, seemingly responding to that said, you know, we're not going to do things like that. The U.S. is pointing a gun at I Iran and wants to, us to talk to them. The Iranian nation will not be intimidated by these actions. So my question to you is, does Iran want to have direct negotiations with the United States on a broad range of issues? Iran is for negotiation. And definitely, uh, we welcome any kind of dialogue and talks with the United States as well as many other countries or all other countries around the world. This is the principle of Iranian foreign policy. <clears throat> so if you heard uh, also the statement made by Ayatollah uh, Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran, which I have his statement, he says, we are reasonable. Our officials are reasonable. Our people are reasonable. We understand reasonable deeds 
and accept reasonable views. The Americans should show that they do not try to threaten. They should show that they do not speak and act unreasonably. And then at the end, he says, this is the way to engage the Islamic Republic of Iran. The Americans should prove their goodwill. If they do, if they do, then they will see that the Iranian people will answer in an appropriate way. So this what, is a clear message, I can and, tell you. And what is the message? I can tell you. The clear message of Iran is that if we see that the United States is serious and is honest about its proposal for negotiation, cooperation, direct talks with Iranian, Iranian will accept it and we will welcome it, definitely. There is no doubt about that. I can confirm it here. Uh, with you and also for your distinguished audience that Iran welcomes n negotiation and talk direct talks with the United States provided that we make sure that U.S. is serious and do not act differently. But let me go to uh, the but statement by uh, first uh, Vice President uh, uh, Mr. Biden. With due respect, what he says here exactly, just, just, just one sentence. Yeah. He says, there is a still time, there is a still a space for diplomacy. That's fine, we welcome this part. Backed by pressure. Look, it doesn't work that way. The most important point is that some officials in the United States should understand how to speak with Iranian. You heard Secretary John Kerry, he was talking about mutual respect. We welcome that. Mutual respect doesn't go along with pressure. We'll be back in a moment with Iran's ambassador to the United Nations. When we come back, I'll ask him exactly what the United States needs to do to get direct talks with Iran going. And we are back with Iran's ambassador to the United Nations, Mohammad Khazai, a rare exclusive interview talking about the prospects for a deal with Iran. So you are saying as the representative of the government of Iran, Iran would welcome direct talks with the United States as long as it shows it's serious. What is the, what is the sign that the United States needs to, uh, to, to, show, to show that it's serious about these talks? You know, the system here is very complicated. Also in your country? Also in my country, but there are some differences. Iranian have been victimized by the U.S. policy. American have not been victimized by the Iranian policy. Well, you, the situation are different. All right. you, you took our hostages a while ago, but, but let's but, not get into this. Tell us what even is the that sign. One, even that one, even that one, if some American complains, compared to what Iranian received from the U.S. policy is different. Anyway, okay. I don't want to get to that For the one. future, For what future. should the U.S. do? Look. asking for direct talks with Iran. At the same time, I'm not saying it, it is necessarily the policy of President Obama or Secretary of State or whomever else, or is the policy of the Congress here, because there are some differences, uh, you know, uh, among their views and their approaches vis-a-vis -vis Iran. I don't want to talk about uh, or blame anybody. But my point is, as soon as you say, okay, we are ready to talk to you and work with you. But at the same time, we punish you and put pressure on you and your people. Iranian cannot accept it. Let, let, me, let me make it clear, clear here. As long as pressure continues on Iranian, nobody in Iran has dared to talk about negotiation. But if Iranians see a single, a small even uh, uh, indication that, okay, Today, the United States is going to talk and act wisely vis-a-vis -vis Iranian. I can assure you that talking to United States or any other uh, nation around the world is a welcoming approach and policy by the Iranian. And not talking to, uh, to U.S. is not a, a holy book uh, verses or something like that. No. It's, it's because of the hostility. So you want to just see some sign that the United States uh, it sends a signal, maybe some relaxation of sanctions <clears throat> or some, some indication that this is not just pressure. Of course, we are not right now negotiating yeah, here, yeah. Uh, obviously. But the point is that Iranians should make sure 
that American is not using pressure on Iran for negotiation. Negotiation should be for negotiation, talks for talks to fight, come, to find common ground and solve if there is any misunderstanding or there is any pr okay. problem that uh, obviously exists. May I, may I yeah. add uh, just, just my own experience? Sure. And uh, I am not a politician, put it this way. I'm talking from the bottom of my heart. Let me put it this way. Eight years or nine years, we were under uh, attacks by Saddam Hussein. A war, imposed war, which was supported, you remember, by US and Western countries and even some Arab countries. I remember those years that every day you could hear the, the uh, strange noise of bombs and things in Tehran and other cities. I had three kids. It was difficult even to find a similac or, or, or milk for your baby in Iranian market. From milk to, to many other things. But Iranian stood against the pressure and hegemony of outside country against them. So we are a nation that we stood about eight years fighting and defending ourselves. So therefore with such a nation and the history that you know very well, Talking about pressure, putting about uh, 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 threatening Iran is not going to work. We have to go, but I have to ask you. That's you fine. are one of the officials who was part of starting the Iranian film industry. All these <coughs> movies that win awards many, many years ago, you were one of the guys who were funding That's it. That's right. So I have to ask you, what did you think of the movie Argo? <laughs> Thank you very much. As you rightly mentioned, it, uh, I was a member of the festival film jury for five uh, uh, years when I was in Iran. Uh, from the technical point of view, to be honest with you, if I was a judge, the movie is a very weak movie. A weak movie. M weak movie. I'm not saying is a is a is a is a just a very weak or it's not compatible with other kind of movies which Hollywood produces. But compared to Lincoln, compared to Life of Pi, compared to the The Miserable. You know, it did not deserve to receive Oscar Prize, first of all. There are many mistakes in the movie. For instance, you are familiar with <coughs> our culture, even the producer or the director. They were not <coughs> familiar with Iranian culture. You know, in Iran, when we want to say hello to somebody, we say salam. But when we want to say goodbye, we say khuda hafiz. Even the movie, even they were, they were going to say khuda hafiz, they were saying salam. So even that much, the producer or director or the scenarist of the movie were not familiar with the Iranian culture. And to be honest with you, whoever in Iran saw the film, they felt insulted by America. It was politically wrong and technically wrong. And I think the producer of the film that is known as the ambassador of peace, as I heard, uh, uh, should be ashamed of producing such a film that from the technical point of view, political point of view, was wrong, as well as insulting a big nation like Iran. I would like to invite the producer and the director of the film to travel to Iran, and when they travel to Iran, the day after they will apologize from the big nation of Iran for producing such a weak film. Ambassador Kazai, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be with you today, Farid. Up next, a different movie. We're going to talk about a world leader who doesn't even want to watch an Oscar-nominated film from his own country. What in the world is next?